Hello students. In our early lecture we have gone through the literate terms in paper number 8. Now it is our next concern that is to study the prescribed text or mm, poetry by the requisite poets and this respective poets and their poetry will help us to understand the modern age in the 20th century more. See, the first poet that we are going to study is that of T.S. Eliot. He was born on September 26, 1888 at St. Louis, Missouri, USA. He was the youngest of the seven children of his parents. His parents were both descended from old New England families. His parental grandfather had come to St. Louis from Harvard Divinity School to establish the city's first Unitarian church and then to establish and preside over the Washington University. His father, Henry Elliott, became the president of the local industry. His mother, Charlotte Stearns, was an accomplished and educated woman. T.S. Eliot, as we know, is a modern poet, American by birth, but he was a naturalized citizen of England. He accepted the British citizenship in 1927 as he had the intellect he came to possess many sites of personality and literary career of his life is we have seen T.S. Eliot is very well known for his for his contribution to the poetry to the literary say work of art criticism at the same time he has published and uh, he has worked as an editor of magazine that the imagist has rolled out and that is Jurongen. In 1915 he married Viviana but after a uh, brief love affair, she died of the illness. Now, in or say after 10 years, he got married to Valerie Fletcher, who has been his private secretary. So, we go through the T.S. Eliot's education. He worked in Smith Academy in St. Louis and completed his college at Milton Academy in Massachusetts. He entered Harvard University in 1906, pursued his career in the philosophy, but he found that philosophy for three years as a uh, graduate school, he could not find the the work. So he completed his thesis on philosophy of E. H. Bradley and then he studied linguistics, humanities, literature and especially comparative literature. His career, he did not pursue a systematic career, he enjoyed a brief uh, time in the teaching proportion he worked on um, physical condition to uh, he was prevented in US Navy work <coughs> then he has gone through was an assistant editor of Air Egoist he became the editor of the Criterion that was also one of the next important so-called writing that T.S. Eliot is famous for. 
So Criterion, it began in 1922. Uh, it influenced the literary developments of the duration. He seized the publication of this book in well during the time of World War II. But after absence of uh, so-called 18 years, he returned back to USA to deliver lectures. He made frequent visits to his native country on a lecture tour, giving readings, official awards, and for his contribution as a literary uh, work of art, his contribution to the poetry, poetic dramas, and very detailed, say, shaping the literature of his time. He was awarded with the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1948. He, as a student, if we go through, he began his creative writing when he was just a student. Having settled down in England, he contributed his first mature poems that to be published in English periodicals 1950s and 60s. 1915 and 16, and he taught at uh, the time in high kid school. He thereafter worked in London Bank or two. He founded, edited the journal that is Criterio, became the director of the publishing forum Faber and Faber. As we have seen he was uh, very close to the imagist movement and brought very close to the fellow American poet Ezra Pound who, inc who also encouraged T.S. Eliot to pursue his career in the poetry. He helped him to get the book review job. Some of uh, the selected poems that was published under the title Proof Rock and Other Observations, Love Song of Alfred Proof Rock. The same year, Eliot was appointed assistant editor of The Egoist. He began to be hailed as great bidding part of sophisticated observations of people. In 1920, his next volume of poems that was published. And this has established him to be a great poet. He began to be compared with W.B. Yeats. And he later on invented much of the criticism all over Britain and America. In 1925, another famous, another famous writer who came to close to him was W. B. Yeats and his association with him. Both of them contributed to the great deal in the modern era, or both of them shaped the modern British literature. See, he declared himself to be a religious poet. In 1927, Journey of Maggie, Aerial Poems, Ash Wednesday were published, and he composed later on some dramatic work of art. The Rock in 1934, the worst drama that is murder in cathedral. See, at the same time, the four quarters, after the gap of 10 years, he continued to write his poetry 
in a religious poem and it was divided into four sections. Eliot, who got the distinction as a prose writer, his critical essays to appeared in the Criteria and various other magazines and journals. His famous critical work, Use of Poetry in the Use of Criticism, that appeared in 1933. His book, The Idea of Christian Society, was published in 1939. And later on, he wrote The Cocktail Party, 1949-1953, Confidential Clerk and Elder Statesman as the Poetic Dramas. Eliot, for his great contribution to the literary work of art and literature in general, he was honoured with literary awards both in England and in America. He visited the USA several times as a visiting professor. In 1948, he was awarded the Order of Merit and Nobel Prize for Literature. This is the last time of his life. His illness caused his death on 4th January 1965 in London. As he was his written his will, he was cremated and his ashes were buried in the village East Cocker in Somerset, where his ancestors had migrated in the seventeenth century. His character, if we see, is very impressive. He was tall and delicate person, built handsome man. All his friends used to comment on his dress, his appearance, his entire outlook. Occasionally they give the glimpses of his flamboyant costume. And he is recalled as tall, plain, thoughtful, absorbed. His nature was very beautiful one. The man, the man I knew in all his reserve was the man he wished to be, a serious but not necessarily a solemn man. It was said by Robert Herbert Reed. His complex personality is of multi side. He was born in America, tutored through Europe, and finally became a citizen of Britain. This plane of so many things as a classicist, as an innovator, as a critic, social thinker, philosopher, and mystic poet. His character was a result of cosmopolitan influences. And all this has contributed to the the dry work of art. If we go through the, some of the remarkable poetry work by him, T. S. Eliot was a versatile writer. During his long career, creative career, he wrote poetry, prose, short critical essays. If we categorize his literary work of art in the, the literary period or periods, it was 1905 to 1909. It was an experimental period when he was experimenting at, as a boy in Smith's Academy. But oh, few poems were published in the school magazine. Second period, which is almost second. 1909 to 17, in which Prufrock and other observations portrait of lady preludes these uh, were published. Then we third period. It was also a remarkable period of his contribution. This is what we need to think about: Geronjan, Burbank, Bedeker. 
Swini erect cooking egg, Swini among the nightingales, the west land, and Holoma. These are the literary contributions of this period. Let us see. These several poems reveal the poet's decaying and degenerating conditions of the modern European society. Most of the poems are uh, black in tone, therefore, generally called pessimistic. Their gloom is a resultant of the poet's inner gloom consequent upon work, ill health, and continued to impress cause the mental illness of his wife. So, and this, this so contribution, Westland is a kind of compressed epic for it portrays the state of the civilization out of which it has grown. It's, it is known for cinematographic work of art and the characteristic style that Eliot has effectively used. It is fragmented in effect, it's lacking in cohesion, thus symbolizing and breakdowns of beliefs and values in the cultural life of the West that we see in the West land. So with this, we have gone through the biographical details of T.S. Eliot. Thank you.